What is up guys and in this super simple video I'm going to tell you about how you fix a sequence if you try to use warp stabilizer and it says the clip dimensions do not match. Super simple if you haven't watched my first part of the video link is in the description go watch that but all you really need to do is to go to your clip whatever that is let's say you have a normal clip drag that into your timeline and you want to use warp stabilizer so what you do is go to the effect panel drag warp stabilizer and it should already start analyzing as you can see here and all you do is just wait till that goes up to 100 percent make take some time depending on the length of the video and how heavy of a file the video footage is but i'm not going to fully use warp stabilizer on that but that's how you use warp stabilizer but once in a while let's say you want to let's say zoom in all right you want to zoom in, you want to do some like rotation, and you're like, hmm, can I apply warp stabilizer on this clip? So what I do is I drag that and use warp stabilizer. And guess what? If you're using Adobe Premiere 2019 and above, you can now use warp stabilizer on that clip, which you already have zoomed in, which in older Premiere models, you could not do that, but now you can. I'm just going to cancel these two warp stabilizers, but warp stabilizer also, as you can see, does have issues if it is in a different timeline setting so let's just cancel this guy here and let's have let's say you want to make a Facebook video or a clip dimension that isn't 23 or 24 frames per second you go to custom 1080p and to make things more complicated the clip I have is actually 120 frames per second filmed and the clip dimensions that I have right now are 1080p in a 24 frame per second timeline. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab two seconds of this clip and drag it onto here. I'm going to click keep existing settings. All right. Now what happens if I try to apply warp stabilizer? Let's see what happens. As you can see, right in the corner it says warp stabilizer does not require clip dimensions to match sequence. And it also tells you, it's kind of cut off here, fix by next nesting. And what nesting is, is you right click, you go to nest, click OK. You can name it something, but just click OK. And it's green. Essentially what green is, is a nested sequence. So if you double click on this, this is your warp stabilizer clip. And what you're doing by using Nest is essentially you're telling Adobe Premiere, whatever outside of this box, ignore it and just keep it as whatever it is already inside the frame. So, for example, if you're using a 1080 by 1080p timeline, this clip is now 1080 by 1080p because you nested it. So, simple fix is what you want to do is warp stabilizer and it should apply warp stabilizer onto the nest. But what happens is some people mess up and what they forget to do, as you can still see the red bar is still there, you need to double click on the clip, go into the original clip, the nested sequence, and what you want to do is you want to remove that initial clip dimension. As you can see, voila, that red nested sequence error message is gone and now you have this clip here which is stabilized. So you just remember the original clip that you applied warp stabilizer, you want to get rid of the initial warp stabilizer effect and you all only want to apply it on the nested sequence. That is the trick to how to use warp stabilizer if it gives you that error message. And there are a lot of other things where the, when you use warp stabilizer, I've seen people in the comments saying, hey, it doesn't work. This method, it works. What you need to do is maybe sometimes you need to make a new sequence, right? Maybe the the actual time base or the time frame isn't the right, or maybe the custom timeline isn't correct. So what, depending on what type of video you're shooting, make sure that the, the frame rate and the frame size is right, whether it's 1080 by 16 by nine or one by one, make sure that you click OK, and then you drag your desired clip, the raw clip, right? Not the actual sequence clip, but the raw clip, right? Any part of the video, drag that onto your timeline, all right? But as you can see, the clip itself, it's still 19, 16 by nine, so 1980 by 1080, 1920 by 1080. So what you do is, all you wanna do is nest. Once it's nested, as you can see, the clip itself is now formed to that 
timeline, so it's one by one ratio now. And you put warp stabilizer onto here, the nest onto the green. That's how you remember. Warp on green, okay? Once you apply the warp stabilizer onto the nested sequence, it should work. The only error message you get when you apply warp stabilizer is if you apply warp onto the sequence itself, the video within itself, the unnested sequence. And just remember, you just got to cut that or delete that effect. And the nested sequence should work, and this warp stabilization should be in play. And that's the really simple trick and how you get warp stabilizer to work even if there is that red bar on top and let me know if this actually works or you have any questions or comments because i've done it several times now on numerous projects and whether that's an instagram video or facebook it does work and if you're having any issues let me know in the comments you got maybe simple things like you can just go and start a new project new timeline clear out your media cache and that should solve all your issues when it comes to warp stabilizer this is one of my favorite effects and it will make any of your sequences look more cinematic or smooth and it will give you more of like a dolly or a pan effect using things like hand everything being handheld and that is how you use warp stabilizer guys super simple and my name is peter you're watching a broke vision collective where we all start with nothing but you can always create something Cheers.